Using weapons is a terrible thing, and nuclear weapons are even worse. Chernobyl was an accident involving one single reactor, a limited accident, whose consequences are still with us. We've had two bombs, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There again, the consequences are still being felt today. Chernobyl showed us the true nature of nuclear energy in human hands. We'd calculated that our most powerful missile, the SS-18, was as powerful as 100 Chernobyl. The SS-18 was the warhead the Americans feared the most. And we had 2,700 of them. And these were the missiles we'd intended for the Americans. 2,700. Imagine the destruction. Mr. Gorbachev was probably right in saying that Chernobyl was a, a big illustration of radioactivity let loose and in this sense suggested to people more vividly that we ought to do away with the nuclear weapons. A year and a half after Chernobyl, Gorbachev retired all nuclear warheads with a range of 500 to 5,000 kilometers. Ten years later, the total nuclear test ban treaty was ratified by the entire world, with the exception of India. Chernobyl marked the beginning of disarmament for the world's greatest nuclear rivals. Chernobyl convinced everyone, Soviets and Americans alike, realized once and for all the magnitude of the atomic volcanoes our countries were sitting upon. Not just our two countries, but the entire world. The entire world. Yet 20 years later, the Chernobyl disaster and its lessons seem to be fading from memory. Meanwhile, beneath the aging sarcophagus of reactor number four, the poison remains deadly. Since 2001, the three Chernobyl reactors have been shut down once and for all. But 20 years after the explosion, a dosometer flies off the chart at the base of the sarcophagus. High levels of radioactivity, a hundred times above normal, are still contaminating the plant's surroundings. The structure has been weakened by rain and erosion. Since its construction, 3,000 liquidators have been watching over it, trying to ward off damage. We built the sarcophagus to last 30 years, thinking that 30 years after the explosion, we could build a new sarcophagus without people having to run because of high radiation levels. 20 years have gone by and nothing's been done yet. And it's urgent that it gets replaced. But the Ukraine doesn't have any more money. Neither do we. A new sarcophagus is underway, but its construction is already 10 years behind schedule. It is a structure 108 meters high meant entirely to cover the first sarcophagus. It will cost one billion dollars. An international fund led by Hans Blix has been set up. We still are, have not put the new sarcophagus on it. We'll be ready in a couple of years' time. When that is done, well, then they can, in due course, later on remove uh, the masses of uh, spent fuel or sort of melted fuel which is there. Twenty years after the explosion, the cooled magma at the reactor's core, 14 meters underground, is still a terrible threat, and will remain so for years to come. I pray God the sarcophagus never collapses. That would be the worst thing that could happen, because inside there are 100 kilograms of plutonium. One microgram is a lethal dose for a human being. That means there is enough plutonium to poison a hundred million people. The half-life of plutonium, in other words, the time it takes for half of the plutonium to disappear, is 245,000 years. This is something we could thus consider eternal. There are areas where there will never be life again. Despite this terrible warning, the nuclear disarmament sparked by Chernobyl is clearly coming into question today. If nuclear development for civilian uses is being put forward as a solution to the problems of fossil fuels and global warming, this landscape 
reminds us that such an option is not without consequences. It requires the greatest caution and clear information on the real risks it presents. Chernobyl also reminds us that if we must live with radioactivity and its unavoidable dangers, we also need to spare future generations from any risk of nuclear apocalypse.